and welcome to UK Dispatch. On this week's show, we're meeting one of the most successful all-female rock bands of the 80s. I'm not referring to Bananarama because, of course, they don't play their instruments. Of course, it's the Bangles, who are made up of sisters Debbie and Vicky Patterson, Michael Steele and Susanna Hobbs. So before we meet Michael and Susanna, let's just remind ourselves of the jangly sound that made the Bangles famous. Welcome to UK Dispatch, Susanna and Michael. Now, the most obvious thing about the Bangles is that you're 60s influenced and you're an all-female band. Oh, I, 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 I was confused really for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> no, not, not you're 60 years old. No, no, no. <laughs> Did you set out with that package in mind to be 60s and all-female? Not really. We just set out to find people who liked the same music we did and, and were interested in writing the same basic well, I don't even want to say types of songs, but who just yeah. liked guitar-oriented, harmony-oriented music. Just yeah. kind of what we do. Yeah, it wasn't like a real kind of showbiz scam or anything. No. Yeah, it was just, it, it's, it's kind of hard, in, even in a, a big city like Los Angeles, with so many musicians, to find people who can relate to you musically. And we met through an ad in the paper. Well, we didn't meet Michael that way, but I met Vicky and <laughs> Debbie, who are sisters that way. And um, it, it's amazing how many people you meet who just want to do completely different things. I mean, the fact that we liked the same, you know, that we would sit there for hours saying, oh, do you like this song? Do you like... I mean, that was almost how we, like, mm. figured it out. It was weird. But, Michael, when you joined, you were actually, um, obviously, obviously, another female, and you replaced a female bassist. Was that a conscious decision to, to employ Michael? Well, well you I think... I think what it is about us is, is not so much that we had a that we had a gimmick in mind as far as, you know, yeah, all girls, boy, that's an original concept. I mean, it's been done so many times. But uh, I think we just, the other girls felt more comfortable working with another woman. And I think at one point they were actually thinking of auditioning a guy. Yeah, it just her. didn't feel right. You know, every band has a certain chemistry. I mean, it's undeniable. I mean, it, it did, we were used to playing with four girls and it was fun. You know, there was, people were a little bit, surprised because always surprised because we just seemed like a regular band that yeah. we didn't seem like some guy at a record company had dressed us up in mm. the latest you know baby doll pajamas or something and yeah. stuck us out there and gave us five lessons on how to play yeah. it was like we we were a real band and we felt comfortable and we looked comfortable being four girls it's and fairly it just, natural because you know if you think about all the bands that are all boy bands boy that's an interesting concept yeah and the, the incredible camaraderie that they get going you know so it's the same thing what makes you different do you think from girls that just listen to music i mean you actually got up and did something about it didn't you well i i don't know i think we're hmm. music lovers like everyone else you know i yeah. mean we're just people we just happen to have at some point early on i mean i started playing guitar when i was like seven or eight you know, decided that I love singing and playing, yeah, there's just dancing something that, and performing. Yeah. We all there's just something that just drives you to want to do it. To learn. It's the same At some point, I mean, you just bought a guitar. Something <laughs> made you think, well, maybe I should try it. No, it's but it is unusual, isn't it? It's more fun than watching. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't think it's unusual for girls to play. I mean, when I was growing up, all my friends played guitar and sang. It was uh, like what we had in common. And these girls yeah. have grown up to do other things, to be one of my friends is an actress and one 
is just a mom, you yeah. know. But we and all used to sit around to entertain ourselves and yeah. play songs and sing. I mean, it's what we did. So to me, it was never unusual. Of course, we were playing folk music that we didn't have a drummer or anything. It was just yeah. three girls with three guitars. But mm -hmm. I don't think it's so unusual. Yeah, I think uh, I think a lot of women are really uh, musically talented. It's just if you want to take it that step further and do it for a living, you know. <laughs> The whole women in rock syndrome, was it easier to get noticed because of the unfortunate novelty aspects of it? Well, as far as the bangles go, I remember when we started out, and you were in bands long before the bangles yeah. existed, it was strictly, it really was the music. I mean, it, yeah. I gave a, a single that we produced, and we started our own record label, Vicky and I and Debbie did, and uh, we just gave it to the local DJ, and he played it, and up until then, you know, we played in clubs, five people showed up, you know, we were <laughs> buying people beer so they would dance, you know. It was really embarrassing. It, you yeah. know, nobody knew who we were. And it really didn't matter if we were girls, if we were yeah. this, if we were that. It didn't matter. It was until people heard that record on the radio that they got interested. And they didn't even know if it was one girl or three girls or four girls. They didn't know. This is a strange thing, too. A lot of people come up to us and ask us if we're English, and I don't know why that happens. That happens yeah. But it was the song, and, and people told me, you know, local L.A. people said that they stopped in their car and they listened, because yeah. it, it sounded like the mamas and papas, and they couldn't remember. Yeah. I you mean, know, it's, the mamas and the mamas. It's the music for us, you know, but for, for some of our audience, you know, it might be important that we're women. I mean, we, whatever. we are, you know? I mean, that we sound <laughs> like girls, we, we look like girls, I guess. <laughs> and, Sometimes. Uh, How do you think your style has changed since Hero Takes a Fall? Because it has changed quite a lot, I think guitar feel to it? Hmm. Well, it has an interesting question because the, the EP in the first album was sounded more like the way we think we sound live. You know, yeah. More guitars, more of just a natural feel. And then uh, with different light, uh, we got into some pretty heavy production values and it started getting away from the way we think we are in real life. You know, We're basically a guitar band, a garage band. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're shooting for with this next record. The guitar. The electric guitar is going to make a big comeback yeah. on this record. Um, hey the Shades of Winter is also a, f a film track, isn't it? A film yeah, soundtrack. From Less Than Zero. Yeah. How, how did that all happen? Oh, well, a friend of mine was doing the score for the movie, and he told me that the, the movie people, um, the same people who had produced Risky Business, which was one of my favorite movies, I really liked that movie, movie yeah. um, were interested in having the bangles involved, you know, and doing a song for the movie. So we were interested, we were betwe between records. The Hazy yeah. Shade was a song that we'd done it when we were playing clubs and we were paying people to dance and all that way back when, you know. <laughs> and um, yeah. We thought, well, it's a chance to get our feet wet again. You know, we haven't been in the studio for a long time, yeah. and yeah, we just wanted to get in and have some fun. Yeah, so we did. We went in and had fun, and we never knew it was going to go to number two in the U.S. We just, yeah. we were shocked. I mean, we were, we just did it like in two days. We just went and yeah, didn't worry about it. Yeah. So all this worrying we do, I guess, doesn't really matter. <laughs> we should stop worrying, but we can't. <laughs> we're worry warts. <laughs> You, were you always a fan of Simon Garfunkel? Oh, yeah. oh yeah. He was one of the major, that he, Paul Simon, yeah. Great writer. Yeah, definitely one of the major 60s influences. Isn't it difficult for you, if you're a real fan of somebody, to put your own mark onto a record? Because you do end up doing that. Well, we didn't really think anyone was going to hear it. I, I'm on yeah, it. We, we thought it was just going to be lost on a re on a soundtrack album. Yeah, be we lost had in the movie. No idea that they were going to, you know, CBS. And, and then we people started going single, single video. Yeah, we were, were like, like, well, maybe we shouldn't. We're we're a little uncomfortable. Let's not release it. And they were like, no. Everyone who heard it. And what really made me happy was a lot of people who didn't really think of the Bangles as a guitar band and a rock band because they'd heard Manic Monday, which has the keyboard riff featured and Egyptian, which is like a novelty song to a lot of people. They All these kids, these kids who wear tie-dye shirts and only listen to Led Zeppelin, there's this whole like group of people <laughs> in the U.S. who just listen yeah. to Led Zeppelin and the Grateful Dead. They yeah. only wear tie-dye shirts. Yeah. I don't think that's come over here yet. Yeah, but anyway, I, I go to I go to metal. They clubs were buying it. They were buying yeah. Hazy Shade of Winter and going, "This is the best thing that the Bengals have ever done." You know, yeah. so we're happy about that. And Walk Like an Egyptian was not your own song, and um, going down to Liverpool and your new single, Hazy Shade of Winter, are, are both cover versions. Does it ever perturb you that? when you do get success in the charts, it's, it's often with other people's songs. 
and it's not self-penned, you know. Yeah, I think it's like everything else. I mean, I read a lot of biographies about yeah. people. I read biographies of, you know, movie actors who hate all the movies they did that were successful and the ones that they loved um, nobody ever saw. I mean, it's just sort of the way it goes. You know, when we make an album, people, four million people bought our record, and on that record is the bangles, or people came to see us live. They see other sides to us other than Walk Like an Egyptian, which is fun. And when we got together, the first songs we learned to play were covers, and it was just, it was, it was a common ground for us anyway, playing other people's songs. Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, it, it, the we Stones are, first hit was a Beatles song. Yeah. yeah. Manic Monday really brought you to Britain's attention, and of course it was written by Prince. How did that come about? Should I tell or do you want to tell? Well, you can tell. It's a simple story. He, he heard our, a song called Hero Takes a Fall, came to see us live, really liked the band, and he, he writes a lot of songs. He always has a lot more than he needs for his albums. Yeah. So we had the same engineer engineering our record who he had worked with for years and I got a call from this man who said Prince wants you to come down to the studio right now um, immediately and uh, <laughs> listen to this these two songs he has for you one called Manic Monday and one was called Jealous Girl um, which was like a real power pop kind of song yeah. but I immediately liked the title we all liked the title Manic Monday for some reason it was just like yeah. something yeah. slightly Prince has always had a fascination with the uh, Hendrix and and female artists, you know, he he loves women that are musical, you know. So uh, he was sort of drawn to us in that way. Yeah. In a way, though, he doesn't particularly help the cause in that he's always writing for females. You never hear of, of Prince giving songs to to men, and really, he should be. Maybe it's a kind of threatening thing for him to do. But he should be encouraging females to write, shouldn't he? As opposed to well, just sort I of talk to giving him. out I songs. I talked to him. Now it's been like a year, but we keep mm. delaying our record. And, um, and because, let's see, I can't remember what the occasion was, but I was talking to him on the phone. I said, do you have any other songs that you ever thought would be good for us? He goes, no, I think you guys are doing great, and just, I like the way you write, so just, I don't think you need any of my songs. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was nice. I mean, he always liked the way we, we, we wrote and played. And yeah. And he, he just thought Manic Monday would be good for us, and it was. I was ask you, is there any competition between you all? There's always. Between, I think uh, there's a definite healthy competition. It's yeah. human nature. Yeah. You know? When one person comes in with a great song, and you, you think to yourself, God, yeah, I better go home and start <laughs> writing. Something's happened to me, I'm losing it. I mean, this happens to everybody. Yeah. But it's but, all, you know, it's all the best for the album, because now we have more than enough really good songs for the next record and we're really excited about it. I mean there's no there's no like dead weight in the band. Everyone is like the competition just makes us, inspires us to keep trying to be better. To outdo the other person. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> no, ultimately to make the band more interesting. But it's it's there. It's always gonna be there. Of course you're often compared to the go go's, aren't you, purely because of the fact that they were another all female band from LA. Um, they were the first one that really did it. You know, they they worked real hard. They were together for eight years all together. And mm -hmm. People tend to forget that kind of stuff. I respect them for what they accomplished. Yeah. Indeed. But Belinda Carlisle, of course, has gone solo on her own, and she's been very successful in that area. Can you see yourself branching out into solo projects? See, the Go-Go's, I know a lot of the girls in the Go-Go's, and I know Belinda real well. They allowed everything to all the competition, all the bad things that can happen to the band, all the pressures that ha happen when you start to get successful, it destroyed them, yeah. you know? They it, lost sight of the They lost thing. sight and they yeah. didn't stick together. They didn't turn to each other and say, well, we may be competitive, we may be under this pressure, but let's band together and really try to enjoy it. And they, and it, and it just got too competitive and too difficult. And it's unfortunate because I think they, they were a good band. They were a really good, good band. Yeah. And, um, you know, we don't we don't know what's going to happen in the future, but it's it's fun being in a band, and if you can learn to deal with the pressures, and enjoy it like anything yeah. else in life. Yeah, you know, I mean, like they say, if you can survive success, yeah. you can survive anything. Yeah. <laughs>